Hi friends, Cole here with episode 49 of Questions for Cole. It is April 28th today, 2021. I had one question this week and it was, Cole, why are there so many different kinds of churches? That's a very good question. To answer that one today, I'm not going to give you the whole history of Christianity. That would probably take about a thousand years or so. And I'm certainly not going to list all of the different denominations that exist around the world. I did look up that online, and the first site I found with the answer estimated that there are approximately 30,000 denominations in the world. 30,000. That's a lot. In Selkirk, we have three different denominations in one block of McLean Avenue. That's a lot, too, for one block. So why do all of these different denominations exist? Well, even in biblical times, when the early church was just starting out, even at those very beginning stages, we read in the book of Acts and in the early letters of Paul that there were already differences happening in how churches were operating, how they were worshiping, what beliefs and practices they held. And naturally, people started congregating with other like-minded people, and there were differences right away in those very earliest of churches even though eventually there were councils held that agreed on certain doctrines and beliefs and practices, there would still have been differences in practice throughout the world, different languages spoken, for example, in different churches. In the first century, there were Coptic Orthodox Christians and Syriac Orthodox Christians. And a few centuries after that, there were Armenian churches and Oriental Orthodox churches. I'm sure there were differences in all of those. The Roman Catholic Church is one of the earliest denominations. Some people say that it began officially in the year 590, but it also should be mentioned that they trace their beginnings right back to the Apostle Peter when Jesus said to Peter that he was the rock upon which Christ would build his church. Flashing forward, in the 16th century, the, Pro the Protestant Reformation happened, which was basically a major religious movement that began in Europe and was a challenge to the Catholic Church at the time, and divided Christianity into Protestant and Catholic. And since then, we've had a history of more and more divisions as more and more denominations have been born, based again on differences in either religious belief or religious practice for the most part. Some of the denominations you will, of course, have heard of. The earliest Lutheran churches were formed in the 16th century. The Church of England, also in the 16th century. Same with Presbyterian and Mennonite churches. Baptist churches originated in the 17th century, as did the Quakers. Episcopal and Methodist churches in the 18th century. Seventh-day Adventists and the Salvation Army in the 19th century, and so on. There was even a denomination called the Millerites, who were named after their founder, a man by the name of William Miller, in the year 1840. I thought that might be interesting to a few of you. I found a huge chart that showed the history of many of the more well-known denominations and when they originated, and which other denominations they sprang from or split from. Each and every one of them came from an earlier denomination, and presumably they split away from their original denomination and formed a new one because of some difference in what they believed or how they worshipped. Now, one way to look at all of this is to see it as a long history of failure. Failure to abide by Jesus' words in the Gospel when he prayed to God about all of his followers, praying that they may all be one, that we may all be one. That's often seen as a passage of scripture suggesting that we should all just figure out how to get along and agree with one another. But another way of looking at it is to recognize that we are all created differently with different ideas, different thoughts, different callings, different interpretations of the Bible. And perhaps it's just natural that we would have different ways of worshiping and different understandings of truth. I read something interesting a little while ago about how we also can't escape our culture. And so it's perfectly understandable that one Christian denomination in Central Africa, for example, will have a different history, a different set of cultural values, a different lens through which they view the gospel and the other uh, readings from scripture than, say, a Christian denomination in Scotland or Mexico or Indonesia or Canada. And yet there are certainly some central truths upon which we can agree and do agree. 
I was uh, reading this article that uh, I'll quote actually now. It had a couple of really neat paragraphs that I thought were, were worth sharing. The article said, even a limited historical perspective must make us pause and wonder at the diversity of Christian thought and expression. The Jewish disciples of Jesus still worshiping the temple, the Greek fathers of the church in council, the Irish monks, the leaders and followers of the medieval church, the German reformers, the English Puritans, the Spanish and French mystics, the American revivalists, the black slaves singing he's got the whole world in his hands on the plantations of their Christian owners. The Victorian churchmen, the social gospelers, the Bible reading women of modern Nigeria. It's quite a list. The question that such diversity raises, says the author, is this. What is the coherence in all this diversity? And I'm sorry I don't have the author's name for this article. This was from a single page that I had saved from an edition of Touchstone magazine from a few years ago. And I'm afraid the author's name wasn't on the page. But the author suggested that there were three important ideas that were important to all Christians, regardless of cultural difference or a particular denomination. And he lists them three. One, the worship of God, the creator who is ever redemptively active in history. The ultimate significance of Jesus is number two, that in Jesus the being of God draws near and that he is also our brother, true humanity actualized. And three, that Christian believers and Christian communities of specific times and places shaped by the Holy Spirit transcend in some measure their cultural particularity and are participants in a global community of the living and the dead. That is one theologian's, theologian's opinion anyway about the three areas that Christians can agree upon. I don't know if he or she were right, but uh, those are up for debate. Go ahead and debate them. I'd love to have that conversation with all of you. I do think that there are many things that we all agree on and many things that we disagree. Unfortunately, these days we see in the media some particular instances of Christian denominations and individual congregations making choices that do not reflect the beliefs of the vast majority of Christian people, I don't believe focusing on their own rights to gather rather than on the safety of others and the other options available to them in terms of how to worship and how to be together in the midst of a pandemic. Meanwhile, there are so many other churches and so many millions of other Christians around the world who are worshiping virtually and focusing their attention on how to live out the teachings of Jesus in ways that are faithful and safe and life-giving without putting others at risk. One last thought that I want to leave with you. One of the many things that I love about our denomination, the United Church of Canada, is that in the midst of our long history of churches splitting and becoming their own denomination, and splitting again and splitting again, our church's history is actually a history of joining together rather than splitting apart. The United Church of Canada was formed in 1925 when the Methodist Church of Canada, the Congregational Union of Canada, and 70% of the Presbyterian Church of Canada entered into a union. Also joining was the small General Council of Union Churches centered largely in Western Canada. It was the first union of churches in the world to cross historical denominational lines, and it received international acclaim. And that's why we are called the United Church of Canada, because we started off by uniting different denominations into one church rather than the other way around. Thanks so much for the question today. That was a good one. If anyone, anyone else has a question about anything, church, God, the Bible, even questions about life in general or personal questions for me, which I may or may not answer depending on what they are, please send them in. I'd love to hear from you. My email is cole at selkirkunitedchurch.ca. I hope to hear from you soon. Have a good week, everyone. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.